here is the Armchair Emperor's book collection. Alright guys, we're going to start with my collection of Osprey Publishing books. These are great. They have full color plates, maps, they're wonderful for war gamers if you want to paint miniatures, and not just if you're into historical games. The medieval books and the ancient books are great for Age of Sigmar and fantasy if you want ideas on how to paint heraldry. And these are just fantastic, and I have them generally in chronological order, starting on the left with ancient times and going to the right more towards modern era. Here we have some medieval battles. Just as an example, here's Poitiers. Just the covers can show you. Just the cover can show you how cool they are and just the beautiful artwork. They're fantastic. They come with a nice gloss covering. And inside the books, there are full color plates, maps, detailed three dimensional maps, period sketches and artwork. And they're, they're just fantastic. You can get these at any Barnes & Noble, or you can order them directly from www.ospreypublishing.com. So, during the course of this video, if you see a particular title that you like, put it in the comments below. And I'll open up that book and we'll do a little quick video about it for you guys. Here we have some more. We're getting more into the Renaissance here, the Battle of Pavia, Fernovo, Towton, which is in the War of the Roses, the Fall of Constantinople, which is a great story. We're starting to get into the Seven Years' War over here, Fort William Henry, Fort Ticonderoga. They also have this really cool raid series. Now, the raid series has to do with uh, small-scale skirmish-style battles. This is about called Tomahawk and Musket in the raid series. French and Indian raids in the Ohio Valley, 1758. And again, the artwork is just beautiful. If you're into Last of the Mohegans and that sort of thing, this is a great book to pick up. Uh, René Chartrand is a great author. So, besides that, we've got a lot of others here. Fontenoy, which is from the Lace Wars. This is not an Osprey Publishing. This is a Men in Battle series, they're a French series. And we go through some Napoleonics and more into modern era. On my bookshelf, I also have some little model wooden ships here as an American ship. And down here, these are just my regular history books. Again, trying to be in chronological order. If there's any that pique your interest, I can certainly give you the ISBN number, the title, the author, or we can do a little review of it. The Medici. Oh, this is a great one. It's about the, the true story of, um, of Dracula, which was really Vlad the Impaler, Vlad Siepish, a true historical figure, which was loosely the, the, what, with, what um, Bram Stoker based his Dracula on. So we have some art, we have some military history, mostly military history. Uh, Bernard Cornwell writes historical fiction, such as the Richard Sharp series, but he's also wrote his first book of regular straight-up history, and this is the Waterloo book, which he recently came out with. And he uses a lot of excerpts of participants in the battle. Uh, a lot of them wrote journals or diaries or published newspaper articles, and he finds all those. A lot of Napoleonic-era stuff. Congress of Vienna, more Napoleonics, General Lee's Army, getting into the 1800s, the later 1800s. The Queen Victoria's Little Wars is great because there were so many wars and uh, against different native peoples throughout the world that Queen Victoria was involved in. And that lists them all in chronological order. Some World War II. Vietnam, 20th century. And then we start to get into some fantasy... And just other random books that I have here that I've read are historical fiction. Bernard Cornwell is one of my favorite historical fiction authors. If you want me to review any of these books, they're really great. The Saxon Tales are wonderful. They're about um, the era of the Saxons and the Vikings. Really cool. Also, the Archer's Tale series with Vagabond and Heretic and 1356 are a Hundred Years of War series, also by Bernard Cornwell. And we have some other historical fictions. And here we start to get into the awesome Horus Heresy series. Now these just 
I've had so much fun with these books. I mean, honestly, I, I can't stop reading these things. So these are the ones I've read so far. This is a collection of stories, The Eye of Terra, The Honored, which is a betrayal at Kalf, No No Fear, it's also about the Battle of Kalf, Deliverance of Lost Korax, Legacies of Betrayal, these are the Trader Legion short stories, The Primarchs, uh, which fills in the gaps between some of the books, Angel Exterminatus, which is the, um, which is Perturabo and Fulgrim trying to find this supposed mega weapon. And it turns out to be filled with all sorts of twists and turns. And I won't spoil it for you guys, unless you want me to review it, in which case I will. <laughs> Fear to Tread, that's the Blood Angels. Prospero Burns is the, the one of the original ones, maybe the first one. Uh, Space Wolves go to take on the Thousand Suns. The Scars is, of course, the White Scars. Shadows of Treachery is a collection of short stories. Horus Rising. Actually, I think Horus Rising was the first book. And, of course, that's about the Luna Wolves, later known as the Sons of Horus. Legion is the Alpha Legion. Flight of the Eisenstein is the Nathaniel Garrow book where he takes off from the Death Guard once he finds out that they are have turned traitor. And it's about his adventures and trying to get back to Terra to warn everybody. Thousand Sons is really good because it's the other point of view from Prospero Burns. It's the Thousand Sons point of view. Descent of Angels is the Dark Angels Beginnings book. Mechanicum is about the civil war between the Mechanicum and the Dark Mechanicum on Mars. And Fulgrim is about the descent into madness of Fulgrim and the Emperor's Children. I've got a couple Patrick O'Briens and things like that. Naval History. Uh, and then we have some of the oversized books. I've got this great book about the military uniforms of the 19th century. It's all full color plates. Very colorful. Great if you want to paint miniatures and historical miniatures, toy soldiers. Here's the Silver Tower books. We're going to bring in that board game. We're in the process of painting up those miniatures right now. We've got a lot of uniformology books. And yes, that's really a word, believe it or not. Um, my uncle does reenacting. Uh, Revolutionary War and War of 1812. And he talks a lot about uniformology as, as a study. The study of military uniforms. I've also got some Warhammer Fantasy um, books. And the great thing about these is if you see one and it's cheap, pick it up because it's got great lore in here. I mean, they're just beautiful. I mean, these were just... Amazing the pictures and the lore and if people are getting rid of them for cheap, you know Jump on that for sure They were just wonderfully illustrated and they're chock full of stories, which are just fantastic And we've got a few more things like that in here. These are the old old Warhammer fantasy army books here. We have lizard men, which is one of my favorite I mean, in here, this is just nostalgia in a book. They have all the old lore, the stories, beautiful paintings of the models, pictures, photographs of the models, wonderful black and white um, sketches. And in here, they even talk about weapons and artifacts, modeling the bases. It's just so retro. And even here, they put this cool little thing. It's called reference books. And it shows all books about dinosaurs, like you looked at when you were a kid. And that's how they get some different color schemes are from these random dinosaur books. That is just so cool to me. I don't know why, it just is. I love this kind of stuff. And if you guys are into this kind of stuff too, let me know. And we can certainly take a look in some of these books a little bit deeper. The End Times books were just a lot of fun. I have some of those. Uh, some more retro army books, Warhammer Armies, High Elves. I think these are all 80s or early 90s. Warhammer Ar Army's Wood Elves. Um, this is another uniformology book which I picked up in the used section of Barnes & Noble for like five bucks. It's fantastic. Great full color plates. Uh, we're going to bring you guys the board game, the Horus Heresy Burning of Prospero, and some of those miniatures will show up in our 40k games. I picked this book up, I haven't gotten into it yet. This book on, uh, it's called Warrior. It's about fighting men throughout history. The End Times, Thankful. This is a game I'm going to be bringing to you guys very soon. We've been painting up tanks and miniatures to play World War I Trench Wars. Gaming on the Western Front, 16 to 18. 
So it's a short packet of rules. My school had a wargaming club and they were giving away some old literature and they had this rule book in the box. I just grabbed it for free. Pretty awesome. We're going to bring you guys that game very soon. Historic the Borges. And if you guys remember the big red rule book of Warhammer Fantasy, if one of these comes up for cheap, I would definitely recommend grabbing it. Beautiful, beautiful artwork. Wonderful lore and stories. It tells you the background before the end times. So if you have this, a couple of end times book and some of the Age of Sigmar books, it gives you the whole story as a nice flow. An old Skaven Codex. Osprey's Frostgrave. Little booklet on the Seven Years War Association. I, I only got the first one of the um, Realm Gate Wars. I got the quest for Galmaraz. But it was very good. It has some great pictures in there, great stories, cool campaigns. Toy Soldier Collector Magazine, which is a lot of fun. They have a wonderful section in this particular issue about 54mm Toy Soldier Wargaming, which is interesting because um, that's really the scale that I like to play in. And not a lot of people play in that scale. But more and more are because you can get really fun detailed miniatures. And here we are, some of that. We've got Kane. We've got the Demons of Chaos. And some of the thin books that came along with the End Times books. Another Wood Elves Codex. And down here we have some more books on uniformology, some history books. This book is great. Again, this is a Barnes & Noble used section pickup. It's all about heraldry. Chronicles of the Crusades. This came from the Met. Some cool stuff in there. A series I really got into for a while. A series I really got into for a while was the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan, starting with The Eye of the World and finishing with A Memory of Light. And those books were just awesome. So if any of you guys like those books, the um, Wheel of Time series, definitely mention it in the comments below because I'll talk to you guys about that forever. <laughs> if there's one series that I wish could, was already turned into a game or a war game or had miniatures to go along with it, it's this series. They're just, they, they were what got me into fantasy probably originally. We took a camping trip when I was a kid and we took the first book the Eye of the World with us and read it on the camping trip and it got me hooked. Of course I've got the um, Game of Thrones books, I read those. They're pretty good, battle scenes are alright. Some of the other books which I might review at some point. These are old Warhammer Fantasy books, End Times books. A lot of the Gotrex and Felix stuff, if you guys are into that, that's great. All the Slayer books, Demon Slayer, Giant Slayer, so on and so forth. Reichsguard was pretty good too, I really enjoyed that.